heard the story about the boy who cried wolf? Well, I used to be like that boy. I'm Nick Andrews, and I was always making up stories to get attention. Mom and Pop never really believed me, but my little sister, Amy, did. And, well, I guess that's one of the reasons I made them up. But the story I'm going to tell you now, this actually happened. It was a warm spring night. Right there. Right above Old Man Phelps' garage. That's where I saw it hovering. And then a shaft of light came out of the bottom of it. And three tiny men walked out the shaft like it was stairs. What did they look like? They were green and they had these great big heads and big black eyes. Then what? Then Old Man Phelps came out of the back door and started talking to him. What were they talking about? I'm not sure exactly. But Old Man Phelps turned around and pointed right here to this very window. <coughs> What's wrong? They might see us. They're not there now. Girls. Dinner's ready. I'm in a hurry. Burgers and fries? Any objections? Nope. Yummy. Let me see those hands. You go wash those hands before you sit down to dinner. Amy, use a napkin. Not so much ketchup, Nick. Did you know that old man Phelps is friends with aliens from outer space? Outer space? Nick said he saw a UFO land in Old Man Phelps' backyard. Amy, it's Mr. Phelps, not Old Man Phelps. That's being disrespectful. Mr. Phelps and uh, old Mr. Phelps was talking to them and all of a sudden he points at our window. Maybe they want to abduct us to another solar system. Nick. How many times have I told you not to tell those outrageous stories about ghosts and aliens from outer space? You're scaring your little sister. But it's true, Mom. I really did see a spacecraft. It was right above old man, uh, Mr. Phelps' garage. Nick, what am I gonna do with you? You got in trouble at school for making up that story about a ghost in the auditorium. I wanna hear about the ghost. Never mind. And now you're scaring your little sister with these ridiculous stories about UFOs. When your father gets back... When's Pop coming home anyway? Next week. Why does he always have to go away all the time? That's his job. He's a salesman, and salesmen have to travel. I gotta go. Amy, when you're done, rinse off your dishes and put them in the dishwasher like I showed you. Okay. What does Nick have to do? He's going to help. Then he's going to do his homework. And I want you both in bed before 9 o'clock. Do you hear? Yeah. How much longer are you going to work nights? Just till the end of the month. If you only knew how much I hate to leave you alone at night. Eh, we'll be okay. And I'll be home by 4. And no more scary stories, do you hear? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna give your little sister nightmares. Love you. Love you, bye. Can I hear about the ghost now? What will you have? Oh, the same thing the lady's having. Why don't you get her another one, too? I usually buy my own drinks. Suit yourself. Thanks. I don't think I've ever seen you in here before. That's right, you haven't. What's your name? Vincent. Walter Vincent. I don't like it. 
Yeah, neither do I, but I'm stuck with it. And yours? Virginia. But my friends call me Ginny. So what brings you in here? I'm thirsty. Oh. Me too. On my tab. Do you stare at all women like that? Just once I love. Wow. You don't waste any time, do you? Not when I know what I want. What is it that you want? I want to have a good time. Yeah, don't we all? Oh. Wow. Do you think we should go have a good time? I do. Let's go. Cars and back. Oh no, that's okay. We'll take mine. You really want to do that? Yeah. In case I get bored, I can always dump you and go home. And where does that leave me? Guessing. Hey kid, what are you doing?
wrong? You went out again, didn't you? Mom's gonna be really mad when she finds out about this. You're gonna tell her? No. Where'd you go? Just around. Now go back to bed. I was having a nightmare. I woke up when I heard you come in. Good night. Are you Nick Andrews? Who is it, Nick? Oh. You must be Mrs. Andrews. Yes. Sorry to wake you, Mrs. Andrews, but I found Nick's bike. Luckily, it had this address tag on it. Why, Nick? I'm surprised at you. Leaving your bike like that? And what on earth would ever make you do a thing like that? He loves his bike, officer. That's his favorite thing. I can't believe you leaving your bike lying around like that. Where was it? In the alley around the corner. The alley? I thought I told you not to go near that alley. I'm very sorry for your trouble, officer. No trouble. Happens all the time. In the future, I'd stay away from alleys if I were you, Nick. He will, won't you, Nick? I'm sure he will. Right, Nick? Thank you, Officer. Vincent. Walter Vincent. Goodbye, Miss Andrews. Goodbye, Nick. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Are you going to answer me? The policeman was in the alley last night. Last night? You were in the alley last night, yes. and you left your 10-year-old sister alone in the house? I'm sorry, Mom, but the policeman... Is sorry all you can say?
you realize the danger to put yourself and Amy in? Yes, Mom, I said I was sorry. Sorry isn't good enough. You deliberately disobeyed me. I said I was sorry, but I... Mom, please, listen to me. Listen to you? Listen to me. No, you listen to me. I'm locking up your bike until your father gets back. And when he hears about this, I guarantee you he's not going to like it. about dad. Then what were you thinking about? I saw something in the alley. Something I wasn't supposed to see. I tried to tell mom, but she was too angry to listen to me. She wouldn't have believed me anyway. What'd you see? Another UFO? No. Something scarier. A lot scarier. But you have to promise not to tell anyone not mom, not dad, not anyone. I promise. I saw a murder. A murder? It was this man and this woman. It looked like they were kissing. And then he put his hands around her throat and he pressed down really hard until she died. And he tried to drag her body out of the car and that's when he saw me. He saw you? I was hiding behind a trash can. I was scared, scared than I've ever been in my entire life. And I knocked the trash can over when I tried to run. And that's when he saw me. I'll never forget that look in his eyes. He wanted to kill me too. So I ran, faster than I've ever run in my entire life. And he knows where we live. He's the cop who brought my bike back. Oh no, what are we gonna do, Nick? I don't know. You gotta tell mom. I can't. She won't believe me. She never believes me. She'll think I'm making up another story. And then I'll be in even more trouble. But you weren't making it up. You were there. You actually saw it. Sure I saw it. But who's gonna take my word over at cops? I believe you. Thanks. I know. If they found a body, they would have to believe you. Wouldn't they? I guess. But they haven't found one yet. At least it wasn't on the news. Only three people know about the murder. Me, the murderer, and you. Come on, Amy! This is Detective D'Angelo. He can help you. Is there something I can help you with? We'd like to talk to whoever's in charge. Mind telling me what this is all about? Murder. It's about the missing woman. So you have information on her, is that it? Yes, sir. Come with me. I'm Detective Baxter. And you are? I'm Nick Andrews. And this is my little sister, Amy. Detective D'Angelo tells me you have some information on the missing woman, is that right? Yes, sir. You know where she is? Well, not exactly. You see, she's dead. She's dead? Yes, sir. She was choked to death in a car. How do you know? I was there. I saw it happen. Where? In an alley near my house. You saw someone choke a woman to death in the alley? Yes, sir. A man. He saw me too, but I got away. Do you know him? Can you describe him? It was a cop. A cop? 
His name was Officer Vincent, Walter Vincent. You saw Officer Vincent choke a woman to death in an alley? Yes, sir. And you're positive it was him? Yes, sir. I'll never forget his face for as long as I live. When did you see this? Sunday night. Was he in uniform? No, he was wearing a regular shirt and pants. Then how can you be sure that it was actually Officer Vincent? Because he brought my bike back the next morning. Brought your bike back? Yeah. You see, when I was in the alley, he started to come after me. I got so scared that I forgot my bike. He was wearing a uniform then. A uniform? Yeah. A blue one. The cops wear when they give out tickets. Nick, don't you think it's a bit odd that a murderer would show up the next morning at the home of the only eyewitness to the crime in a police uniform? I mean, if he really was a murderer? I guess so. Can you describe the woman? I really couldn't see her that well, but she had a tattoo on her shoulder. What kind of tattoo? It looked kind of like a butterfly. Have you told anyone else about this? Your mother, your father? No, sir. My dad's away on business, and my mom, well, she wouldn't believe me anyway. She's always accused me of making up stories. Why don't you tell Mr. Baxter about the UFO you saw over Old Man Phelps' garage? Nick, you need to understand something. Accusing somebody of murder is a serious thing, especially a police officer. You gotta be certain. You gotta be real sure. I'm sure it was him. All right, all right, we'll check into it. Thanks for coming in. By the way, where's your mother? Oh, she's working a temporary shift and she won't be home till four in the morning. I'll have Detective D'Angelo drive you home. Phone call, line three. Take it easy, Nick. And uh, good night, Amy. Bye. Nick, look out! Whoa, Nick, that guy was crazy. a nightmare. No, he's trying to kill me. Who? Officer Vincent. Why would Officer Vincent want to harm you? He murdered that woman. What woman? The one in the alley with the tattoo. Oh, Nick, what am I ever going to do with you? It's true, Mom. Nick, I don't know why you keep making up these outrageous stories. But as soon as your father gets back home, we're going to take you to the doctor and find out what's wrong with you. It's not a story. I was there. Mom, you've got to tell the police! Nicholas Andrews, you stop it! Stop it right now! I've got a ton of paperwork to do, and I've got to get to work or I'm going to be late. Dinner's on the stove. Amy's already eaten and had two slices of pie, so don't let her have any more. You've had quite a day, little man. You'll feel better tomorrow. Now you eat a good dinner and go to bed early. You hear? I'll be home a little after four.
You're incapable. You don't have what it takes. You're incomplete. Hey, hey, come on. Take it easy. Jeez, I'm not gonna bite. At least not yet. Okay, what's wrong with you? Are, are you some kind of funny guy? to ask you, uh, how's the investigation going on that missing woman case? Dead ends. Nothing. No witnesses? Nobody's seen anything? There is. Nobody's come forward. It's oh, terrible. And not a print on the car, either. How'd you know that? One of the lab boys told me. He said whoever it was was savvy enough to wipe the car clean. That's right, somebody knew what they were doing. It doesn't leave us with much, does it? Look, do you mind if I do some poking around, see what I can dig up? In my off hours, of course. I didn't know you were that interested in the case. I just want to nail a bastard who killed her. Who says she's dead? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? Well, sure it is. I mean, she disappears, the car's found abandoned. It smells like a homicide to me. Yeah, you're probably right. Go ahead, see what you can dig up. Who knows, we might get lucky. If you find anything, make sure and coordinate with Hendrix. Sure. Make sure I give him everything I got. Where are you headed? Is that knee still bothering you? Hop in, I'll give you a ride. 
No. Something bothering you, Nick? You can tell me I'm your friend. You're not my friend. You killed that woman. Now what makes you think I would do a thing like that? I saw you. You saw me and that's why you tried to kill me yesterday. That wasn't me, Nick. That was somebody else. It was you. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put all my cards on the table here. You went down to the station. You did some talking. You shouldn't have done that. It's a very bad thing, Nick. Now let me tell you straight here. There is no evidence. The only problem is that you saw me. Now that puts me in a very precarious situation, Nick. Say, what's your sister's name again? She's a really cute kid. I'd really hate for anything to happen to her. You leave my little sister alone. Well, that all depends on you, Nick. Do you understand? I said, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Now, yesterday, that was just a warning. But I think you know what's going to happen to you next time. Now, I'm going to be watching you. Not every day, but you'll never know when. Have a nice day, Nick. Let me check out the merchandise. Oh, hello. <laughs> Say, uh, how much you charge? If you need to ask, you can't afford it. Oh, is that so? Well, uh, when do you get off? About five minutes after I get on. Oh, just what I like. A woman that takes her time. <laughs> hey, I'll see you out there, uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Ow! This is Mr. McClendon. He says he saw the missing woman the night of her disappearance. Come in, Mr. McClendon. Sit down, sit down. So where'd you see the woman, Mr. McClendon? At the bar, mug shots in Third Street. I was watching the telly, and I recognized her right away. Especially when they mentioned she had a tattoo of a butterfly on her shoulder. And I said to myself, Mac, that's the girl we saw at the bar the other night there. About what time was that? Mm, 12.30. she alone? Huh? Alone? No. She's one of the loose ones. She knows how to work the bar stools. I've seen girls like her in every bar I've drank in. Wait a minute. There was a guy. Tall fella. Getting kind of cosy with her. And when she got up to leave, he followed her. You describe him? Aye. Tall. Brown hair. About 180 pounds. Ever seen him before? Nah, he's not a regular. Thanks for coming in, Mr. McClendon. No problem. What happened? Ah, my wife, Mary Kate. She's Irish, you know. Got a really bad temper. She doesn't like my drinking. But she let me have it with a potato masher. She's a tough lassie, you know. She plays soccer. Here's guys. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, the description fits Vincent all right. About half the other guys in this town. What about the boy's statement he saw Vincent murder the woman? Yeah, he also said Vincent was wearing a uniform the day he brought his bicycle back. Uniform? Vincent doesn't wear a uniform. That's right, he doesn't. That pretty well cuts the kid loose as a creditable witness, doesn't it? Still not enough. Without a body, we got nothing to pin murder on Vincent or anybody else for that matter. Besides, we got no fingerprints. Boys from the lab went over that car with a fine tooth comb and couldn't pull up one print. Somebody was savvy enough to wipe the thing clean. Can we put a tail on it? No. He'd smell that in a minute. So what do we do? Give me everything you can on Vincent. And I mean everything. I want to know if this guy ever so much as littered, spit on the sidewalk, or crossed against the light. You got it.
That uniform doesn't change a thing. You're still hollow inside. What's your name? Amy. Amy Andrews. And this is Barbie. She's one of my best friends. Say hello to the nice policeman. What's your name? I'm Officer Johnson. Are your parents home? My dad's away. My mom's asleep. She has to go to work tonight at 7. So she works at night? Only for a couple more weeks, then she gets to stay home with me and Nick. So you're all alone? Uh-huh. Monday through Friday. It's kind of scary, but we understand. Sure it is. You're a very brave girl, Amy. How old are you? Ten and a half. Where's your brother? He's at the park. He plays baseball. There's the phone. I have to answer it when my mother's asleep. Hello? Hi, Daddy. What are you doing? Having a picnic. Picnic? With Barbie and Charlotte. And a nice policeman. Policeman? Officer Johnson. He's outside with Barbie. Something wrong? Oh, no. Everything's fine. You don't have to worry. Where's your brother? At the park playing baseball. And mom? Asleep. Why are you being good now? Okay, Daddy. I miss you. When are you coming home? In a few days. I love you. All right. I love you too, Daddy. something terrible happened. It did. Who would do such a thing? Obviously some juvenile delinquent with nothing else better to do than run around breaking children's toys. It was that policeman. He murdered Barbie. Oh, Amy, why would a policeman do that? Besides, the doll can be fixed. Oh, kids, such imagination. Tell me about it. Well, I'm just glad it wasn't anything serious. It was. Come on, Charlotte. Thank you, Mrs. Levin. Oh, sure. Sure. Bye, Amy. I'm sure it'll be okay. Amy, what did the policeman say his name was? Officer Johnson.
Paula. Paula. Vince, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. Don't bother trying to find me because I won't be coming back. I think you know the reason why. Goodbye and good luck. Paula.
what you're doing, kid. Nick, I got here as quick as I could. You said it was important. It is. It's about Officer Vincent. What is it? I was walking home from the park, and he pulled up alongside me and said he wanted to talk to me. He confessed to killing that woman, and he said he'd do something bad to my little sister if I told anyone. Go on. Yesterday, Amy was playing outside with her dolls, and he came up to her and said his name was Officer Johnson. And then the phone rang, so she went inside to answer it. And then when she came out, he was gone, and the head was ripped off her Barbie doll. So I tried to follow him to see if I could find out anything. Followed him how? I followed him on my bike. It wasn't easy. Sometimes he was half a block ahead, but I managed to keep him in sight. And then he slowed down once he got onto Cherry Street, and that's when I caught up. And then he stopped at a construction site. A construction site? Yeah. He just got out and stared at it for a while. He stared at it? Yeah. He got in his car, and then he drove off. Why would he do that? I don't know. Look, Nick, you've been a big help, but let us take it from here, okay? If he contacts you or your sister again, I want you to call me right away, you understand? Yes, sir. Does your mother know you're here? No, sir. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. Why bother? You just embarrass yourself again. Hey, you look like you could use a ride. Hey, it's all right and all, but you know, you look like you've been walking for quite a while. Some kind of a a pervert. You don't. Seriously. Do I look like a pervert? No. Get in. Come on, get in. Or two. Spring and cherry. Spring and cherry? That's quite a ways away for somebody to be walking so far so late. My boyfriend was acting like a jerk, so I just decided to walk home. It's too bad. There are other guys. I don't have to be home till midnight. Yeah, yeah, I got him right here in front of me. The tenth time I told you that stuff's not mine! Yeah, Will. And for the tenth time, what was it doing in your pocket? How should I know? Tom. I gotta go to the bathroom. Well, I just have to wait a while. Got some news. You asked me to do some digging on what I could find about Vincent. Well, I dug, and I found some very interesting things. When Vincent was a patrolman with the Phoenix Police Department, he was married to a woman named Paula Taylor. They weren't married long, she divorced him. Some sort of irremediable medical problem. 
Medical problem? Impotency. Really? I did some more digging. About three weeks after they split up, a woman was reported missing. They found her car, but they never found her. Not a trace. About a month later, he quit the department and comes out here. I dug even deeper. I showed the photograph to the bartender at Mugshots. He remembered seeing Vincent. That's two witnesses that can tie Vincent and the missing woman the night she disappeared. And here's something else. The Andrews kids said that Vincent confessed to murdering the woman and then threatened him and his sister if they said anything about it. I tell you, the kid's got a lot of moxie. Last night he said he followed Vincent over to a construction site on Cherry Street. Construction site? Yeah, he said Vincent just stared at it and looked at it for quite a while. Why would he go to a construction site in the middle of the night? Unless... He had a reason. Like a body. Exactly. Get over that construction site and go over it with a fine tooth comb. And I want a tail on Vincent. I want to know where this guy is 24-7. If he so much as goes to the can, I want to know it. Really don't want to do this. Really, I don't. But you can't laugh at a man the way you laughed at me and expect to get away with it. See, a man needs respect. It's just something a woman doesn't understand. Give a damn what the planning commission says. I got the blueprints right here in front of me that they approved. Yeah, well they better get on it quick. We're pouring concrete in that last section first thing tomorrow morning. Let me know ASAP. And what city commission are you with? Detective Hendricks, police department. Jeez, now what? Take it easy, I'm here on another matter entirely. You know, the damn planning commission approved these plans a year ago. Now all of a sudden, now they want to argue over the cost. Go figure. Now, what can I do for you? If somebody did throw a body down one of these shafts, we'd never be able to find it now. Have all the shafts been filled? No, there's that area over there that's in dispute. We're supposed to start pouring concrete there tomorrow morning, but who the hell knows what's going to happen. Can we take a look? Sure. When? Just left the construction site. You find anything? Nothing. Big fat goose egg. That body was here. It's part of the city hall project. No way we'll find that body now. Damn, then we'll have to go at this from a different angle. Listen, Vincent comes on at six. Put a tail on him, maybe we'll get lucky. Okay. And whatever you do, don't let him spot you, okay? Got it.
This is Pamela. She's going to stay with you while I'm at work. You're to mind her and do what she tells you to do. You understand? And Nicholas, you're not to leave this house. Don't worry, Miss Andrews. We won't have any problems, will we? Okay. You want to do this the easy way or the hard way? Afraid your buddies at the station will find out you're not all man? Dispatch, this is Hendricks. Pass you through to Baxter. Detective Hendricks for you, sir. Baxter. Win, Hendricks. I just followed Benson to an abandoned warehouse over on Largo Street. He just went inside. Think he knows he's being tailed? No, I don't think so. He just kind of looked around like he didn't want to be seen. Well, stay with him. And if you think he sees you, back off. And don't take any unnecessary chances. Right. I want an APB out on Vincent. I want him brought in now. And keep trying to find Hendricks. Yes, sir. Well, he asked me out twice. But I had to say no, because my mom doesn't want me dating until I'm at least 17. Can you believe it's 17? A whole year more. She says there's more important things. Like grades? Yeah, grades. Hold on.
Hello? She's not in. I'm the babysitter, Pamela. Hello? I don't know, he hung up. Where was I? Yeah, well, check this out. Today, he pulled me under the bleachers and he kissed me. Like a full-on smacker. Oh, this is a serious kiss. Mm-hmm. Okay. Call me after 10, okay? Okay. Bye. Unless you want to feel that again, you'll be quiet. Where are we going? That shouldn't concern you. You're not coming back anyway. So, you're gonna kill me too? You think? You're the only witness. Got rid of the body, nobody's ever gonna find that. But you? You could put me on death row, and I'm not gonna have that. No. I've got to get rid of you, too. How are you going to explain that to Detective Baxter? I told him what you did to that woman in the alley. He's going to know that you killed me. Nah, he won't know that either. Nobody saw me take you out of the apartment. They'll just figure you wandered off on your own. So you're going to bury me in cement, too? No. 
Detective Hendricks has been snooping around the construction site. It seems that they think that there's a body there. I can't figure out how they would get that. There's only one person who might know, and that person's you. But how did you know? I followed you after your shift. I watched you get out of your car and stare at the construction site. So I figured you'd bury the woman's body there. And I told Detective Baxter. Pretty good. Pretty smart. A little too smart. You should have just left it all alone. I warned you, but you didn't listen. And that is why I have to kill you. Anything from Hendrix? Nothing. Maybe he went for a dinner break. Get your coat. We're going for a ride. <laughs> Try that again. I will kill you right here in the car. Do you understand? It's on, Nick. I'm gonna have to change my plans. I'm gonna have to kill you somewhere else. You're scared. They'll catch you sooner or later. And you know that. That's why you're scared. Yeah? Well, you ought to be doubly scared. Because you know I'm gonna kill you as soon as I have a chance. So shut up. Are you gonna strangle me too? No. I'm gonna cut your throat. Get out. You're not, Nick. Here I come. Must be inside.
get into now, Nick. Shut up! Nick, come on, come on, it's okay. It's all right, he's dead.
He's just got a little bit of bruising. He'll be all right. Pretty tough kid you got there, Mrs. Andrews. Hadn't been for him, we'd have never caught Vincent. Oh, Nick. Can you ever forgive me for not believing you? Pamela. I'm home. Oh, hi, Miss Ann. Yes. The kids are asleep. Everything's fine. Fine, thank you. Now you go back to sleep. What are you doing? Taking a shortcut. Well, I'm not gonna go through that alley. I'll take the long way. White dog asks us in the name of Duke? No. Well, if you do, I live three houses down. 